optimistic approach. Radiant there are two types of teams, back. I think, in Dota that we've seen so far. You have the EGs and the VPs that are like, look at us, we're the best. But they have veterans that can do that. And on the other side, it's like it comes down to a leadership thing. You have something like uh, OG and Liquid where they're a little bit more you know, demur and they're going to say stuff like, we just want to play the best Dota that we can. Like, you're never going to get a better answer out of that than Curl, out of Curl, right? He's always going to say, like, I hope we just show that we're a good team. And uh, it kind of does something for your players, too. It doesn't put a lot of pressure on them, and it allows them per to perform. Because if you just say, like, yeah, we're here, everyone sucks, like, we've seen a lot of holes in everybody's <laughs> games, uh, you're putting a lot of pressure on your team. Which is, frankly, probably, like, what G thinks, because he's a veteran. He's like, I should remaining. win here because I've been around for so much longer than you have. and. Five That's not working remaining. out too much for them. They have a lot of veterans. Sioma the Slayer, G, Aloha Dan. Yeah, I think G is like the, the veteran of veterans of that team. For yes. At least. How long has Sema been around? A uh, long also time. Also a couple of years, right? Uh, yeah. A, a, an absolute ridiculous long time. And a ridiculously long time in that team. He's played 887 oh. games. Vega? On Vega? Just for Vega. I did actually not back. even realize oh, yeah. that Vega was around for that long. <laughs> <laughs> they've played 800 and, uh, actually, they've played 903 games in Dota as a professional team. He's played almost all of them. Some sick days. Yeah, he he's, he's, missed, he's missed 26, uh, my, my bad, Matt, 16. He's missed 16 games that Vega have ever played. So, he has been on Vega pretty much the entire time. in every iteration. Yeah. All right, did not know that. Okay, had the first pick. Yeah. This hero, I, I think I was saying it in the break room as well, it's really looped up for me uh, in terms of how strong oh, it is. And hello. Oh. Hello. <laughs> They've done a newbie, boys. I really like the response though, because Bounty is afraid of very strong lanes, and both Razor and Omni provide just that. Amazingly yep. strong lanes. And, and they then... didn't care about the Rubik, which often said is the yeah. better Omni Knight. I mean, they instantly picked it too. So they were yeah. like, oh, Omni Knight, okay, Rubik. Yeah. And we have yet to see whether it's a support bounty or offlane bounty. Especially Chinese teams like to pick offlane bounty. Personally, I don't like it at all. It doesn't really seem to do anything. Kind of more like transitions into the support position for later on. If you have really farm dependent one and twos, though, I think it's okay. Because you, you're not a hero that shoves out lanes, sure. But you create this like, kind of pressure on the map where you can just scout. It doesn't matter if you die. The comeback mechanic is strong for you too to Radiant catch up later on into the back. game. You can roam a little bit more in the lanes. That's how Immortals plays it, anyways. Yeah, I mean Immortals is, I think, the team that started it. Yeah, and then some other teams started copying it. But yeah, I'm just like, not very sold on it because I've never really seen it do well other than in Immortals. I'm, so, what, so what about this this dual core pick? We we talked about this the other day when Secret did it, and it's not been a popular back. thing for the last probably eighteen months, two years, and. They started doing it. Newbie did it earlier on today, very effectively in that last game, of course. And it was the same rose as well. They took Tiny Razor in the secret. And this one, they take the Omni Razor. Yeah, and that's what Newbie took earlier. Yeah, and yeah. I think it's because it's such a strong opening. Like, Omni's counter Ten in lane so far, we've seen to be Razor. Like, that's the hero that really crushes him. And so I think Five it makes a lot of sense to just kind of pair them both together. Because, like, you're going to take the counter to the hero. like, And it's not even bad. Razor yeah. nowadays is like, it's not a bad hero a good whatsoever. Opening, yeah. It's so good. Yeah. Like, I think this is a really strong opening. And plus, uh, what it does is it gives you a drafting advantage too. Because later on, if you can't beat it, you have to just like ban it out. Right, yeah. And also they have a last pick. So they're probably going to pick two supports and then pick that this super carry or super mid, whatever they want to opt for. That can actually like carry the game. Wait, Winter got through it until here. I actually didn't realize that. Yeah. This is this scary. When is that? Yeah, scary. There's no, there's not a lot of catch though. That's the upside. Yeah. If you know that yeah. this Omni is a core, then your four position has to be some kind of like guaranteed disable. Yeah, morph and anti range these kind of heroes are uh, very strong for Vega. They're probably gonna fourth pick the carry, pick another. Well, probably offline. I don't think they've ever ran offline in bounty, right? Um, but most European teams haven't. I'm not sure. Oh well. The upside though of this combo is like, you can pick a mobile mid hero like Storm, but it'll still be really rough yeah. against Razor. Yeah. yeah, but it's still it's not a fun matchup for Rana to play. No, not at all. Uh, what was your the bounty hunter? Did Vega ever run that? And bounty? No, right. Mm. I think only Chinese teams and Immortals actually have done it. Remaining. And the new Mirana is actually a bit stronger than the old one because you have these four Five leap charges. Remaining. So you can is it four? You know, three, you three deep charges with like, f what's the recharge time? Forty seconds, I believe. That'd be so broken if she just had a point. like. Yeah, for it's a lot smaller, unlimited, though. unlimited yeah. leaps. It's a lot smaller, but <laughs> as soon as you get charged and you leap away, you 
most likely going to be out of it. Yeah, it definitely makes a, a difference one. to her in the sense that before you can either be very aggressive leap in, but yeah. then if you miss an arrow or team gets, you're kind of done. Yeah. But what uh, or you can do? leap out, and right. that's the only thing you can do. Right. So what I like now is actually you just leap in aggressively, yeah. maybe force a TP or yeah. two, and, and you leap, leap out, out, and you're like, haha, just kidding. Didn't actually want to do anything here. Yeah. So they go Slada, Winter. We have seen this combo a lot. Obviously, the Slada can amplify the target that's Winter Cursed, and then he just gets demolished by his own team. This is a great Ten draft so far, Will. It's a very it? strong draft. Yeah, I really like King Wins. I think nowadays, people, though, uh, when you see like the counter to counters, like Rubik counters, uh, Rubik's supposed to counter Omni. Yep. Wyvern is supposed to do well. Uh, and then you take Mirana to counter the Razor. Slaughter counters the Bounty Hunter. Yeah. And so now Vega, you you need something a little bit more cohesive. Oftentimes, like, Kinguin, mm. if there wasn't a Rubik on the side, I think that's a Sand King pick. But yeah. because there's a Ru Rubik is, like, probably the best support against SK. Yeah, I'm a bit worried for Vega because they don't really have anything right now. They have, like, no tower pressure. Their lanes are okay, but Kingwin's lanes are stronger as well. Their team fight is not nearly as good. Yeah, it they're, feels they're like lacking they're... a lot of things. I think they're over countering. Yeah, they they literally just counter pick one by one. Yeah, or you have a raise up. Do you think they were they were caught out a little bit by the only raise opening? Yeah, but not something that Kingwin have done here they, they so far. They might have been, but they should have been prepared for it also. Yeah, because so, it's very like it's a very meta opening right now. Yeah. At least this tournament. The upside though is like. You needed uh, you need mobile heroes Ten against the Razor and Omni. You need like to avoid Morphine. fights. Yeah, yeah. Morphin was a really good pick, and he's really good against Omni as well, of course. Yeah. You need to you need to avoid fights like crazy though. Yeah, you can't team fight them. If if AM was better here, I would say that'd be a pretty sick AM game. Yeah, yeah but the the only thing he's really afraid of is the slaughter because you can get killed really easily when you're amplified, especially early on, and they will put a lot of pressure on you. You have a lot of armor, though, naturally. Yeah, you do. It's not the worst thing, for sure. And you can also, like, build into a Manta later on. Like, the Morphing is a really strong hero, too. He has, like, 30, 35 armor mid-late game. Yeah. So he's not really too afraid of the slaughter. So they ban... They actually ban Ench. Remaining. So they might think that that is going to ultimately be uh, a remaining. core bounty, or, like, they're at least exploring the option. Yeah. Well... To be fair, Eng could also be off lane. It could, they can be both, like both bounty and Eng can off lane or support. And there's a decent chance, like because these teams have played against each other so much, that they have inside information. Yeah, because yeah. what from I talked to LSH for like a few minutes, and I was just like, "How do you feel about the matchup?" He's like, "Well, we play them a lot, so we have a pretty good understanding of them." Which of course also works in Vega's favor, though. Yeah. But it seems like King One is a little Radiant bit more up to date on like how this tournament. So far, has played yeah, out. I feel like they caught them a bit off guard with the yeah. draft. At least Vega doesn't seem to respond like too cohesively. They're like, kind of just drafting what's good, you know. But the the entire lineup they have actually is not like a super combo or anything Ten like like Team King Win has. Yeah, I think Vega needs more pick off, like short cooldown pick off, yeah, Almost, like Beastmaster or something. But Beast is not actually banned. Yeah, Beast would be a very good pick here. But it gets it's like a hard. The laning phase is going to be. Kind of rough for him because it's still open. Like King Wing can just if they if there's a beast top, then they can just run the razor up there and yeah, put a one-on-one -on -one matchup against the Marana. And there's a lot of fear. Like like a TA for example would be amazing. Then they do that. Yeah, they because they it's not easy for them to burst and their lockdown is like. But but beast would amplify what they need the split push as well as the pick off potential, and I don't really see a lot of other heroes that would do that. Heroes like Void and stuff are way too greedy with this lineup, so they need a cheap off laner that can. Split push and catch, and also provide some vision. Because as soon as they see the slaughter, they know they're kind of safe. Yeah, for me, uh, Beastmaster stood out. Brew would have been really good too, but of course they banned it out themselves. First ban already. Yeah. Dire team. Time here. Tide on oh, tide. 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 So I didn't actually think they'd take Tide because I think it's a bit slow. And, and Razor hard count is more the lane. Yeah. Oh, and this is the so TA that we spoke yeah. about, yeah. And Razor is, a, I think it's the hardest counter actually to, to Tide hunt in the lane. He can't do anything. Yeah. He can't even touch the creeps. And that's what we thought is if you put, if you don't pick a hero like Beast that can just like catch up by ganking, you take a hero like Tide, then they will move the Razor from mid and they'll just go top with yeah. it and say like, well, we'll get three winning matchups then anyway. A TA beats Potom. Razor beats Tide. 
What did they have off them again? It's a bit. It's a bit rock paper scissors it's Omni. in, in it's places. Just, this yeah. isn't it. Omni against morphing is Rubik bounty. I think it's okay. Yeah. I think he'll be okay. Uh, Omni will be okay for sure, especially yeah. if they don't try them bottom. Like Rubik morph do nothing to an Omni Knight. They yeah. need the bounty there to be even able to pressure him. Okay, um, we're going to head over to our commentary team. We're waiting eagerly to bring you this particular quarterfinal. It's the final quarterfinal for today as we move on to the semis next up. But we still need an opponent for Newbie. Which one is it going to be? Who's going to take the early advantage, Vega or Kinguin? Let's find out as we head over to Toby One and Melini. A very good question. Paul, who will be the one advancing through into the semi-final? I asked Ben. So, Kinguin did way better in the group stage. Vega were yep. on the verge of elimination. Yep. But these, teams, these two teams have faced off against each other a lot. Uh, so, I would actually expect this game to be much closer than you would expect from one of the better teams versus one of the lower-seeded teams in this tournament. It's interesting, too, because like, there was a lot of questions around Kingwin coming out. The panel were talking about it. You come out of the two-game series, the group stage. Is this really going to be the test when you have a full best of three that you then have to play against Vega? Well, Do pick Kingwin them, right? actually have what it takes to win a best of three? Or was it just pure group stage? From what I saw from the group stage, they played extremely well and, and had really good drafts. And I think... That's that's not something that is going to vary much in between a BO1 and a BO3. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, we have Vega. Not super hot this tournament, but I, I really like the talent level of their players. I think they're slightly playing below what they're capable of. Uh, and these players have exceptional pedigree and one of the best in the CIS region. Yeah, it really is a whole bunch of old schoolers together. I, 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 I'm waiting to see how the draft's all going to unfold. The panel was also touching on the fact that Tidehunter probably not going to be fantastic against Razor. Like Omni Knight, TA, there seems like a lot of early enabling for King when just to try and run over the top of Vega. Are Vega going to be ready to fight? Like, this is Morphling, Mirana, Tide. This seems to be a lot of, like, we take time before we're actually going to be warriors. It is, and their lineup is also a little strange in that they have Tidehunter, who's a great team fighter. I mean, Rubik, with the benefit of Omni on opposite side, is decent. But aside from that, their team fight's extremely weak. I actually thought they would all in for more split push and just completely avoid team fight. But the Tidehunter tells me that, OK, they actually want to fight them in the mid game. But look at Kingwood's lineup. That's not a lineup you really want to fight into. So much minus armor, so just a lot of team fight all around. And a lot of physical damage coming out early. You don't actually need that many items. Amplified damage is generally just going to be good enough to to want people in the mid game. But if you yep. don't fight them, they're going to take Roche, <laughs> which basically means that. Well, I just want to see more of these fights. Then, like, get the slaughter levels, get your get your what's that? We 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 call it amplification, corrosive haze, corrosive haze, uh, and then with a the meld from Nisha and probably the momentum you get from Nisha, this could be a very dangerous kind of world for the Vegas supports to live in. Not to mention the cause got already being harassed pretty heavily out the mid and. What does Slayer want to do against this? He reveals himself. Now, cops a little bit of damage. Now, crush him up, looking for an arrow, but all that's going to hit is the range creep. So, Vega at least trying to poke the beast in the mid lane, but Nisha is still 6-3 against that 1-0 of the Mirana, but she's got a bit more of a creep wave to work with now. Courier Dyer's snipe in mid. Yep, Slayer able to wrap around the back, so shut himself to attack and then takes care of the Dyer Courier. This will relieve that pressure for Vega in mid. The Bounty Hunter is the key here. He needs to be the one to disrupt the lanes because the lane matches are very poor for Vega. You have the Razor versus Tidehunter in the top lane. Omni Knight's a very, very strong laner in the early game. Morphling is pretty weak. And then TA has an inherent advantage versus the Mirana in the middle lane. So all three lanes, if Bounty Hunter does nothing about it, is going to be very, very poor. Slayer back into Invis, really being a nuisance for this mid lane. Dang, it was super fast about eating that. <laughs> Both, <laughs> both of them. Um, now the lanes which we haven't really touched on, being uh, top lane as well as bot lane, but it's this, this, it's this Razor. We talked about how Razor would probably crap all over the Tide Hunter. At least Tide's not forced into the jungle. We don't have the same problems that we had uh, in yesterday's game that we cast. But this is a fun lane, at least for Partos on the off lane, working with the Wyvern, trying to keep that Morphling down. 
I think Pados has a, had one of the best Omni Knights that I've seen in this tournament. He's like generally gets super super involved. And there's a fine line between two greedy Omni Knight and being able to team fight with your team. And I, I feel that most stray too far on the line of greed. And I think he, you know, he's uh, he's always on the on the map, trying yeah. to help out a team or disrupt the course. So we we don't see blink kills. <laughs> I mean that's fine. Actually, um, you you like to blink at least. Uh, just uh, I mean it depends on the game, but. Generally, I prefer the fighting ones over the Radiance. Yep. Depends on the game. God's copying a lot of damage here in mid. He's took a, a decent amount of tangos up his sleeve. The castle he's... is definitely doing a good job of making making God burn through consumables. Yeah, he's burned through two cells already and the set of tangos. But mm -hmm. luckily, without the chicken on King Wind's side, they can't keep up the pressure too yep. much. That's kind of where like Nisha hasn't actually applied any of the pressure. You expect like side blade damage to be a little bit higher, but most of his attacks. God's been keeping his distance. The advantage of running that range, that range of Marana. Okay, now he gets the line right for that one. Yeah, the Marana mostly picked, I would say, to not get destroyed by the Razor Link. You want cores that Curry, have super again. easy mobility. This isn't happening. Not, not with a flying courier. If it happens, then something is seriously, seriously wrong. He's waiting behind the tier two tower. I'm actually very surprised that they haven't been microing this courier. Like, they should have fortification, right? Shield? Yeah, they should. That's, this is a... Uh, he's already done it once is a thing. Second yep. time... Not too good. You just generally fly it over the trees. Um, or oh. just keep it at the tower for a little bit. Badly for the bounty room. Potential denial in from the creeps. Not gonna happen. Hartos holding on to that level 2 purification to get the kill on the Rubik. And that'll give him first blood. Can't believe it's taken us that long to I actually mean, get a 1-0. The two courier kills are gonna make the gold. Pretty Vega favored. I was wondering why, like, like as I as I say first blood, it felt wrong. <laughs> but it's because we've we've had two fluffy little couriers die. Chickens count. Chickens kind of. should count. Ty's been doing very well. This is almost a straight one on one, and he hasn't been jungling, so his CS numbers aren't inflated, mm -hmm. and he's you know, pretty close. Not able to get any denies off, but well, that gives Vega the opportunity, right? You have the ability to to fight with the Ravage because he's not forced to just farm in the jungle and be completely out leveled. But do you push it when he hits his level six? Like, can you rotate heroes to the top? Do you bring God off that mid lane? Dude, he's actually really good at splashing. You can tell that he plays TA a lot. I think Nishi's been fantastic in that mid lane, no matter what heroes he's, play he's played this tournament. Yeah, but you can't be good at everything, can you? I well, he, if he, he has been. a great hero, the hero depth. Yeah, he has been pretty exceptional, I would say. So Morphling has the Ring of Hell, so he can kind of take some harass. Arctic Burn, not really going to do that much. He doesn't have that much HP. Yeah. You want to keep nice and low, I would say. So for last hitting purposes, and you have Ring of Health in case you take any sort of harass. It's not like they're going to burst you from 100 to 0. They have, unfortunately, no silence outside of Kingwin, so Morphling, you know, a pretty good mm -hmm. pick in this situation. He is, shouldn't really be afraid of that much. As Bounty is trying to roam around the back of mid. I'm not really finding the opportunity he's looking for. There's also a lot of leeching of experience going both ways. All right, Bounty Hunter. Okay, that'll help when you get rid of the Observer. Uh, both Bounty and Slaughter have taken a lot of experience out of these mid laners. We expect this though, right? Like when we're, when we're in this dual mid meta. Yep. Again, the benefit of 2v2 mid with a TA though, you always get those ancient stacks off and they do have a three stack. This is, well, do you want to cancel the TP? No, you don't. He didn't have Ravage anyway. <laughs> but it was the uh, Shuriken toss, potentially. Yeah, it looked like uh, G also didn't have a mana to cast arrow there. Slight problems, but out to safety. Frag the attention away for a little bit. Twist is the other upside, too. So Templar of Tassel 33 13 versus that mid Marana, who's 27 3. But. We're gonna have to take into account too, the Templar Assassin is going to be Ancient Farming in a bit, man. Aloha, Dance. When you really underestimate the amount of damage like I was doing now, I didn't think we'd had much of a problem, but a double damage rune on the Rubik plus that waveform. Oh, he also, Morton, just did a ton of damage with the Omni Knight. Omni Knight's help. Hmm. Patos. Low on life, but gonna burn the shrine. The Courier Hunt is on once again for the Bounty Hunter, but Courier safely back at base. Is it going to happen three times? <laughs> it might happen three times. If it happens three times, then King would have... Uh, well, I'm not quite certain what side of the bed they woke up this morning. If... Well, if Bounty Hunter were a little bit more patient, maybe. It's actually just going straight down there. It actually doesn't take that much micro to deal with the Bounty Hunter. 
like maybe 500 range to the left or the right is generally good enough. But you still got the shield as well, like you got invulnerability. It's just really hard to have that micro. Like you, you have to be, oh man. So that's just the second observer ward in the last minute and a half that's been taken down. So yep. the one in the mid, now the one on the bottom. Slayer's been playing very well. Oh, Patos gonna purify up and he's too far away from the Rubik. I think they're trying to contest for that eight minute bounty rune. Another aggressive observe ward being planted. Vega ping it out very, very quickly, but are they really going to try and fight this one? It looks to be the case. Arctic Burn going to slow down the Rubik. Morphling going to move in as well. It's a nice little quick stun and the purification. Rubik gets evaporated, thus does up quickly. Slayer revealed for the moment. Aloha Dance, what can you really do here? He's waiting for the attack timer with the cold embrace. Wyvern regenerating quickly. You'll have to waveform away. It's a long waveform back up the hill to safety. But Kingwin showing they've got the grip to fight. Not letting this bounty hunter oh, get away with everything. For the Omni Knight? No, 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 no for, I mean, for the Tide Hunter? That's not going to work. <laughs> Looks like he... Did, did he reveal it for the bounty hunter to make a play? I guess it's... Do we, do we go once more? If he walks down the hill... No, 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 this time they're moving the courier north. They're, they're not falling for it. Not a third time. Nice one, Winter Wyvern. See, one of the supports heading back to base, he likely would have micro it in this situation. Die. Yeah, so Tidehunter's actually very, very large. Oh, nice dust. Slayer revealed for the moment. Here comes the TPing in. Arctic burning wide, but and Slayer doesn't really have anywhere to run. The plus of fuel gives the bonus damage. Mikako, who gets the kill. Ooh, a Treads Buyer on the Razor. You don't see that too often. Is you always prefer the phase boost for the static link? Most, most people uh, have the phase or the BOTs. Uh, just, yeah, for the move speeds. With the unstable current, you're already pretty fast, and just being able to move around the fights to keep that static link up is very, very important, and just to help you farm faster. The treads is way more tanky. Uh, if you're the ones going in, I'm a little bit surprised to see him building a little bit tanky because he does have an Omni Knight on your team. We saw the Slork yesterday who went almost full glass cannon on his talents and his item build because he does have an Omni Knight yeah. uh, coming out behind him. And generally, that's one of the benefits of having Omni Knight, right? You can, you can go a little bit more aggro but also the attack speed I, I really like on razor i don't like the plus damage on razor you don't actually need that much plus damage because you have a lot of uh, a lot of plus damage from static link so having treads to synergize better with the plus 224 is going to be way more flat out damage if you're just straight right clicking cool. bounty hunter is trying to keep a really close eye on this stack it's already been farmed up however they do have a double stack of ancients to the south but this just <laughs> I think he's hunting the courier once again, but ever since Kingwin lost the courier the first two times around, he's been very vigilant at making him fly a random places. God, a lot of damage in mid, while on bottom lane, Partos battling with, with the morph. Oh, if it is really the morph lane. One of the better heroes to morph. Getting the degen is really nice. GA, some, some Omnis don't skill up GA until like 8 or 9 anyways, so clearly not that important of an ultimate to have super early on. Back to his normal self now. So, Bounty Hunter is going to hit six pretty soon. They have the Tome option available to him. Yeah, he's level three right now, but just needs one kill or to sit in the lane for maybe a minute and a half, and he should be level six soon. But King of can rest easy in the meantime, knowing that any track kill won't be happening. So, he just ate the Tome. He's actually, you know, they just need one more kill, and then they can start things happening. But it's pretty hard. They're pretty well fortified inside their base. They're not making any super aggressive maneuvers. They're just farming up stacks safely, playing close yeah. to key TP points. And the, and the second an engagement happens, as you said, like close to a key TP point, you're going to get cold embraced. You're going to have repel all purification. There's just so many things that are going to make it difficult to find these picks. So Bounty Hunter just swapped. There's another Forever chicken, though. at level four. <laughs> Courier snipe. Oh, no. God, they've been so vigilant about this. So vigilant. And now it's going to happen once. Oh. <laughs> we know better. Nice. <laughs> that almost feels like <laughs> well played indeed. That was actually just perfect timing, too, to the point where he popped out of his <laughs> Did you actually sit there and go, I'm going to make the courier fly straight down the mid just to waste the time with the bounty hunter? That works. Especially when he expected to be grounded. might have it if TA worked out how much experience she was getting from the camps. Potentially. Potentially, yeah. Be very good at math if you could do that. 
And now that you saw him TP out, you don't have to worry about microing it for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Big group up in the mid, three men smoke up at the same time as the Desolator is done. That's a level 7 slaughter, so you've actually got the amplification available, and they're slipping into Roshan at the same time as Vega slipped down to the bottom lane. So they're looking for their opening. It's gonna be Partos underneath the Observed Ward. Where's that TP on the way? It's not there just yet. Partos, he'll end up going down before any kind of reaction can come out. They're okay with this, though, with the Rosh. I think it's... I mean, it's not a great play losing your Omni Knight, but because they do have to go all the way over there, it's fine. And it's a perfect time because the Bounty Hunter TP back, so you know he's not going to gather a lot of intel in that next 30, 45 seconds. Yep. Nice, nice take here. Yeah, so King one with the Aegis the Immortal. Oh, no, 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 Coria up the hill. It's got dust on it, but the Courier's alive for the moment. He's, he's waiting for it. He's waiting for it to come back again. Bottom lane's being nicely pressured out at the moment by the Morphling. Partos doing what he can to defend it, but with Rubik moving over with the Stolen Purification. A lot of bonus damage into Partos that can be done. They pick him up and there's that damage. He'll hit the mark. Yeah, Rubik with Purification. Rubik against Omni Knight is just spectacular. Like, most of the team fights, team fight potential that Omni Knight has, you kind of have to play like a range hero anyways because you're going to die. So, I mean, having Rubik with his added spells and then the bonus of purification or repel, usually purification I would prefer, is just ridiculously good. I think no matter what he takes off the Omni Knight, he'll take it as a win. That's the thing. It's Can't like steal that spell. It's like stealing off the older Viper, not the current Viper. Like, hey, always got Viper Strike. Life is good. Too bad stats aren't in the game anymore. You could just do a 0 0 4 0 build. He could never steal anything. God, that feels so odd. And he can keep in an offensive uh, null field all game, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Their the magic damage is with plasma field, splinter shards, and that's it. So, yeah, offensive null field all the way here. Yep. They seem to find another way to battle the physical damage when that negative armor kicks in. Bounty Hunter's gonna get picked off by Exotic Deer. It's like a top lane gank with the smoke. Middle lane is where things were starting to pressure up because Nishi wants to deny the Observed Ward. It only just got placed down the TA trap. He hits the ward to start with the Purification Cell. Keeps himself alive. Rubik back behind the tower. Things only did finish up. They pick up on top the T1 tower. Arrow flies forward. Won't connect on the mark. Fortification. Pushing King went back for just a second, but Nisha with the Desolator and the Aegis Immortal. He's happy just to keep pressuring this up. With an Omni sitting behind him, he doesn't care. He's got no mana left. Just continues to chip away at the tower and force movement in from Vega to, to defend. Early Halberd. I like this a lot. Evasion is really, really strong. Almost almost even preferable to armor. You want one of those two, uh, armor or evasion versus their lineup. Evasion is sometimes preferred versus TA, so you miss that, uh, miss some of the big hits, the meld, but we'll see. The I mean, the Halberd is going to be really good, too. Just, just the disarm. Yeah, they have Repel, but... This this mass entry battle in mid is yeah. kind of stupid in a way. <laughs> They're trying to keep tabs on Slayer, who uh, is currently leeching some experience on bottom. At least he has track available. And he's going to put it on to Karkor. Crush going to miss his target with the amplification up. Into the trees with the starfall. And the damage is enough. It's the type of kills that Vega really needs to be able to get. Meanwhile, up on top, Aloha Dance on the run. Tartos waiting the time. There's your wave for TP, but they have no stuns available. So a very simple escape for the Morphling. But maybe not so easy for the Rubik until he had stolen Melt. <laughs> oh, defensive ability that doesn't allow TA to get anything. He couldn't line up for a side blade attack, but... You yeah. really want the traps. The traps are so good. <laughs> They'll stay. Melt saves his life here. And yes, she managed to only steal Refraction while Refraction was in, was in mid-air. He melted again. Gold Quick on the fingers. Yep. Ooh, SNY Razor, my type of guy. Or oh, not another courier. He's got the observer oh, up on the hill. There's your hit. This time it's a one hitter. Slayer, a real nuisance. Had those really good deep observer rewards too. They were able to kill Omni what twice on bottom and take down that tower with the observer rewards that have been placed. Yeah, they definitely done a lot of work with with fantastic vision. However, the team fight is still suspect. Looking at the CS, we have 
just massive leaders on the side of uh, King Gwyn. I mean, I guess Morph is kind of close to the counterpart position one, but but TA is miles ahead yeah. of this Marana. Well, it's, it's hilarious that like you're, you're that far ahead. Yes, the Marana's behind, but at the same time, you've only got a lead of 1,000 gold. That's a lot more money into the hands of the Omnite, most definitely, but there's just something which is astray, and a lot of it is coming from, like, be it the Courier times with the money flowing in from this. The kill count's definitely not it. We're four or five in favor of Kingwin. And the tower is a level at one apiece. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. But this game, Dyer's at least on the graphs, is very is close. Attack. And the teams are going into a trade-off position. Kingwin I mean, are not giving the Tide Hunter the fight he wants. They're not giving him the 5v fight just yet. As uh well, don't go replay yet. We'll have a moment of potential fighting up on top lane. As uh Bob break the rocks. Radiance as he, they come in on the top lane. The first initiation in from the Slana is going to fail. Aegis Immortal times out on the Templar Assassin, but she does have that Blink Dagger available. He stole with his curse. Oh God, trouble for him. The crush is out with the amplification support is nearby. With the Trigger Toss bouncing around, God still needs that Rufus Speed to escape. He's got enough of it. No, he doesn't. Managing to swing the Mallet in or the Trident in of the Slana. God will end up falling. I mean, this game being relatively passive, I think, favors both sides. Like, both teams are okay with it. King win because they're not giving up trap kills, and Vega because they know they have worse team fights, so they don't really want to team fight them at right now. They, what they really want is for Morph to just get really, really big and be able to blow up these weaker heroes. You want to threaten the Omni Knight so he has to cast his spells on himself. You want to be able to instantly kill the Winter Wyvern in the back line and kill the Slaughter early on in the fight. So they're just waiting to get to that point, and then King win, they just. They're just going to keep trying to snowball off Ferocious and using their massive team fight potential um, in the meantime. However, with the Rubik stealing Winter's Curse, they could potentially look for a fight in the next minute and a half. I don't, I don't actually think it'll be that useful just because, I don't know, it's just really hard. You, you feel like you're forcing it too much. You have Winter's yeah. Curse, that's great, but... He doesn't have a, a repositioner as well. Like, there's no Blink Dagger, there's no Force Staff right now. He's got Magic Wand and Arcane Boots. This isn't the most, like, this isn't the Yaps or Rubik. This guy's sitting at 2.4k net worth, almost on par with the Wyvern. Ooh, he takes the, uh, he takes the attack speed talent on the, on the Morph. I usually see the attack speed. Oh, trouble with the Slayer. Melt! Okay, that's, that still at the end of the day is a very, very weak Bounty Hunter. Yeah, not and your King ideal King would brought a target. lot of heroes there. That is worth his life for the smoke, I would say. Ideally, you'd be in a position where you could just like TP out like up the cliff, but you mm -hmm. know, you can't have it all. And now King Wood, at least with the Bounty Hunter down, they, they move out into the side lane, so get as much of the map out of the map as possible when the Bounty Vision disappears. So it gives Nisha more time to farm up on the bottom lane. He's almost completed the entire Hurricane Pike. Both these are almost ready to fight, by the way. No. The Blink came out on Tide. Signals fight. Oh, they get trying to fight mid. They should blink three man. Ravage Lana just sat there and watched him. He won't sit there much longer on the curse. Oh, Rubik. How did he get Does denied? It, yeah, how the hell did he get denied? I mean, I'm not sure. I think I read something about a potential bug with the Windsor's Curse, but I mean, there's no way that they should have been a deny there. Uh, okay. Well, maybe we could watch it again in slow motion replay. Open up the combat log or something. But that's, that's a little awry. One for one trade off. Even if it is going to be a denial on the Rubik. He can't do it himself. Maybe it's because he was holding Winter's Curse when he got Winter's Cursed. Is that the bug? Oh, okay, let, let's see it again. Maybe. It'd be great if we could slow this down when it happens. So the initiation comes in perfectly from the Morphling. They explode Partos, or from the Titan Hunter, into the explosion. And now they create space. Yeah, question mark. Esport ready. Uh, God, gonna get picked up from the bottom lane. Templar Assassin jump in for the damage with everybody else from King, King Winter. While Ravage is down, they just wanna force it. Hey, why not? Another crush. This time it's gonna be off the Tide Hunter. Corrosive Pains, able to be stolen by the Rubik, and then instantly Nishu will get rid of him. They're pushing so hard into the base of Vega. Remember that Team 3 Tower is what they want. Rubik will buy back a quick Hurricane Pike. Morphling waveforms out, dodging the attacks from Nisha. The dodge the secondary ones, which flew in a little bit later, however. But they still want that Tier 3 Tower down. They haven't got it yet. The Trax are going to start to build up. 
But the repel taking them off. There's your jump forward. A double thrust from Kako. It does the work, but not enough of it yet. Wave forms again retreating back. The curse will create space, allowing Kingwood to not only get through the tier 3 tower, they're beating him to that melee rack. Where is your defense? Without the ramp, it doesn't look like it even exists. They keep the pressure up. Arthline almost betting like he has it, but he's got nothing at the moment. When they push in deeper, Alohan losing so much life and so much damage coming at them. Are they really getting ripped apart in their own base? They still at least have the melee ranks, but now that is gone as well. The pressure maintained by Kingwood. They turn to fight. The tide ravages down for another 17 seconds. He's gone for 38 seconds. And without these heroes, Kingwood, they're now going to back up. They've done the damage 22 minutes in. They force it by kicking down the door of Vega's home. I mean, they lost what, one hero to the last ravage and then immediately stormed out. That is the opposite of a value ravage right there. But, you know, you have to applaud Kingwin for, like, that takes a lot of gumption to just, okay, go down there. They don't have ravage, we can take this rank. Yep. They don't have Aegis. You know, a lot of teams would play it safe, maybe wait for the next road, take the Aegis. Like, okay, you know, you feel a lot more safe here. And they know that Vega's team fight is just really, really weak. Morphling is going to be a threat later, but he doesn't even have EB yet. However, he will have it for this next fight. I'm interested to see which part of the, re of the replay we look at. That kind of went on for about a minute with the attack. But this is, as you said, Kingwood just understanding their strength, understanding their timing. Well, also, I think their lineup is just a lot more well-rounded. Like, they can do a lot more things. We talked about the, the Marana, like, potentially countering the Razor, but mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter. She just gets dumpstered by the TA, and she doesn't have enough teamfight presence at all because you can't deal with Repel. Like, how do you actually deal with Repel as a Marana? You just can't. Your right-click's pretty yeah. poor. Even if you do go right-click, you generally go Maelstrom. I mean, look at, look at the Marana's items. She has Manta style, and that's pretty much it on her. That's not a lot to work with. And the Maelstrom's not going to help out that much more either, but they're going to try for, and go for Roshan. Movement is coming. King one is on the way. They will try and counter this attack. Slayer, very visible on the front lines. Miss it up. He's already down. Roshan, he's still alive and on low health. Vega, they put all their eggs in the basket. Right now, we're having scrambled eggs. They stun up even Roshan with the arrow. So by the time they want to bring down Aloha, Dead King will keep moving forward. Strength, four point save you. Slaughter, however, has died for King one, So there's at least a little bit of a rebuttal. But how much do you really have? The TA and the Razor, way too strong. A triple kill for Exotic Deer. And while Roshan is slow, they can take that. And with Aegis the Immortal and so many heroes down, they may just go straight down mid. Just a very smooth game coming out from King One, identifying every opportunity that they've been presented. The small window in between the two Ravages, where they have to wait for the Army Knight to respawn and walk all the way to the bottom lane, and then now this, knowing that Vega, next road given to King Win is going to be game over. They try and sneak it themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe they had a Solar Crest to make things a little bit easier. Bounty Hunter did buy a Solar Crest, so they pretty much did what they could. Oh, God. I don't know if what, uh, what they're attempting to do with God here, because... Uh, <laughs> Wyvern's dead, but he buys time. The mid lane is still being attacked. The buyback is there from the Wyvern. And once again, Kingwin feeling the compression. This tide is back up in four seconds. This will be the difference of the fight. The fact that Kingwin are losing both of their supports. Maybe with a Splinter Blast, they can almost kill off God. The range attack is almost enough for Wyvern, but not just there. They're delaying them and distracting them. Ravage will pop in the mid lane while the pressure is still there for Kingwin. So both of support, Razor will fall down. And maybe they have the defense. Guardian Angel stolen by the Rubik. They'll try and pressure it forward. Rubik basically now forced into the Guardian Angel because of the TA aggression. The attack is coming in. Vega, they got themselves a nice window. They've managed to get a couple of pickoffs in the back line. If they can catch Nisha, it'll be the icing on the cake. But yeah. that's a hard ask. Wyvern, however, a lot easier of ask. That's a lot of track kills. And that's four heroes, only three of which have buyback. That was an interesting idea by the Winter Wyvern. What he wanted to do was split Vega up so that it would be, you know, three, oh, sorry, four of Kingwin's heroes inside their base. Mm -hmm. And then Vega would be fighting with three because the Marana and the Bounty Hunter, or maybe the Marana would just be back there. So he kind of thinks it's worth it. But at the same time, I just think they're straight up stronger as five. He just cheese and toe, why not take a fight? But just walk straight down mid and together you fight. But yep. Yeah, at that time, the synergy didn't really seem to be so perfect from Kingwin, but yeah, you can understand the logic. Yeah, you can see what they were going for. However, splitting up versus Bounty Hunter is just generally not what you want to do. They ended up giving, I believe, four track kills there. Yep. 
The gold swing, hilariously enough, was only about 3,000 in the gold. The experience swing, however, was a lot more and could buy Hawkin. Slayer being a pain in the butt once more. Guess dust up, the blink crush will be there, but delaying the Orchid is more than worth it for the bounty hunter, even uh, with that death time. But, giving it, giving oh, up the gem is not worth it. Okay, that's not so great. Hey, you see more of these jumps. Oh, okay, this is one way. To make it worthwhile, Aloha Dance gets the 650 gold. The unstoppable six-time streak of Nisha comes to an end. You have to respect the Morphling at this point in the game. Yeah, they had like a 10,000 gold lead in ages, but Morphling is still incredibly strong. He has had free farm for most of the game, and he has that uh, E-Blade, which just makes life extremely difficult for Kingwin. So now TA has to consider building a BKB, and she doesn't really want to because she's Omni Knight, but at the same time getting shotgun, getting ravaged, getting halberded, like all these things just really limit her potential in the team fights. She, she's still got the, okay, the BKB just got added to the quick buy, yeah. but she had uh, full blood on only then. I mean, the greedy build almost paid off. Like if they were just able to take down that mid racks, they'd yeah. probably just be able to, you know, skate by until the end of the game yeah. at that point. But now Vega are definitely back in the game. Yes. They just have to hold on, keep the bottom lane at bay. Should be pretty easy. They have really good heroes for pushing out you know, a strong lane of creeps. Morphling is really big. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and and already up to level 20, rapidly approaching the mana style. He also just has a ton of armor. He has 40 armor right now on the Morphling. And this is before Butterfly. So... He's actually going to be extremely difficult to burst down. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of like you're talking about, like the magical damage of King when being a little bit lower than what you would really want it to be. I think you I just need the you just need the Bloodthorn or the Orchid, either or. But I mean, he has two ways to get out of it. Oh. Another reason why that mantra is next on his uh, to buy list. Uh, he's almost there. Ultimate Orb is it, and the Courier is actually bringing the recipe out to him now. Uh, King would seem to be slowing down the pace of the game. Back into farming up the Ancients, bringing Exotic Deer online. His armor is nowhere near as impressive, but having both BKB as well as Aghanim Scepter, King Wins push and team fight is still very strong. Yep. I don't know if they can respond quickly enough to the shotgun, though. That's the biggest problem. I think they might just instantly lose a hero at the start of the fight. How do you respond to it? Like, is it just the repel of Omni Nine? Is that it? You uh, usually jump? you'll have, like, I mean, he's sort of low. Uh, Glimmer Capes are pretty good. Okay. Uh, well, that wife is like a is pretty good. Time soon. Or even even just a casual cloak. You just need to be able to survive it so that you can get purified up or repelled or cold embraced. Well, this but. is a confident tide hunter. Has a uh, refresher all been the quick buy? Vega. They smoke up. I believe that she did it on top of the side trap. I, he's killed what? Three couriers this game? It's a lot. I think it's four, actually. Four? Yeah, it's either three or four. I mean, that's crazy how much gold that that's gotten them. Well, here comes your scan from the Radiant, as well as the Dyer. Only the Dyer's gonna ping positive. The Winter Wyvern is, is in the trees. The arrow will fly forward, hits the perfect mark. I'm not certain why he was left behind while the rest of his team already retreated back to their own jungle. He just wanted to push that wave out. Just Splinter Shard and then maybe TP out. I mean, he popped the smoke, or he... Tank the gank of the smoke, so it's actually not that bad. I just would like to see him maybe use some of his gold that he has. Because he did go for the GPM talent, but he's still the poorest hero in the game by far. Omni Knight's picked up something. We haven't seen a hell of a lot in this tournament. Oh, goodbye, Bounty. Uh, the Aeon Disc is now in the hands of the Omni Knight. This is actually probably the best situation I've seen Aeon Disc picked up in all of the games that I've seen Aeon Disc picked up, which is like four. <laughs> Because their gameplay is to ravage, kill him with shotgun. Yep. And there isn't that much that he can do about it alone. Maybe if the if the uh, Wyvern were more farmed, you can like glimmer and cold embrace. But that's really unlikely. And even then, I think the shotgun just does a tremendous amount of damage. So if they can't burst him down, and, and I mean, because ravage is always... It's not long enough to deal with the Aeon Disc. And then after that, he can just repel GA. There's no counterplay to repel GA here. You'd have to, like, immediately silence him after the Aeon Disc pops, which they just cannot do right now. They don't have long enough disables. So I actually think this is a good Aeon Disc pickup. As I much as it, I... <laughs> it pains you to say. Yeah. Hey, at least you don't see in the Chaos Media. Like... <laughs> 
or the media stuff, whatever the hell that bloody thing is called. Meteor hammer. Media hammer. That's it. You don't even know the item. That's how little it's picked hey, up. I, I went full Warcraft with the way I, I pronounced that just then. The chaos media. Isn't that invoker skill? Yeah, but it, uh, wasn't it the old? Invisibility. The old warlock. I'm not going to help you out here. Yeah. I'm just leaving you out yeah, in the dry, dude. The <laughs> uh, screw it. Move on. <laughs> Just hope the stream lagged at that point when I said that. Okay, right, so I, did they see this Aeon disc? I don't know. They might just like show the Omni. I was like, hey, ravage me, bro. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, he's actually just like not the caring. Full wrap around. The full, like it's so far wrap around that they're actually going to miss that timing with Moonlight Shadow. Into the trees. It's the Razor on the back line. They know. Deer. And here, there's your first reveal. And into the instant BKB. And the jump board didn't get the crush off, however. That big pop from the Morphling. It goes into the Slaughter. And now the steal of damage. It goes back and forth both ways. Cheese allowing Morphling. They stole 148 damage both ways. Uh, allowing the Morphling to have a little bit more life. Now he goes for his quick pop. That's the uh, Wyvern. Very tanky. Rabbits will connect. On the night, protected by the Lotus. On Purification down as well. But the arrow. Five seconds on. And he'll break free now. And the Morphling has to wait for the way. Doesn't have enough life. But Nietzsche, the sun from the Rubik is creating enough space. But is it enough space, really? Nietzsche misses his melt attack. It's the Ghost Scepter on the Rubik, allowing him to back up a little bit further forward, back backwards with that purification. Gets a little bit more life, but it won't be enough. If they jump once more, Morphling looking for the target. The Tide Hunter, they both have to force staff disengage. Ooh, that cheese pop by Razor. <laughs> Ooh, and the Aeon Disc. Both were actually... Oh, the Aeon Disc. It actually did work. Mm -hmm. I Some, actually thought that was on the Morphling, but it was just his magic wand. <laughs> Considering he was in uh, full Agi. Very nice play by Aloha, though. So. Are Get they it. coming to contest this? Too late. No trying. No yeah. chance. But the way he played that to deal with the Razor's BKB was phenomenal. And pretty much wasted his entire BKB duration. If he had, didn't have that cheese, Vega would have crushed that fight. Oh boy. Refresher shot now on the now on the Razor. You could have a double ulti from him. There is no Tidehunter Ravage. But he doesn't have that refresher orb yet, so a 75 second window for King One. You could refresh the Aeon disc, Toby. Yep. <laughs> you could. Is, is, is that, are you actually not believing it in that much? Refreshing a double Guardian Angel? I think he's with actually... With the Aghanim Scepter? I'm okay with that. But he's still another, like, 2,000, 3,000 going away from that. I think he's that important in the fight. To, or to burst it down. Okay. Ooh. Like, oh, so low! 200 HP on the slaughter. He was the uh, attack target last time. Curse on the Tide Hunter. Not really enough damage to kill him off. But creating space for the melee racks. We dropped the BKB as well for the Razor. It's already been expended. But there's your refresher shot. BKB's back up again. Plus that ultimate available. They're coming back here for the range racks. They've still lost the slot. No amplifications going the way of King One. And they will now back out off the base unless they see an opportunity to jump. Still no Tide Ravage available. It's another 20 seconds before it's off cooldown. And King went awaiting. Where's the attack, Nisha? It feels like bait. They still never burn that second BKB of the Razor. He just doesn't have a lot of life to work with. They need slaughter, and he's like a. I'm surprised he didn't go for like a glimmer cape himself. He has 1780 HP. It probably did like 1700 damage to shotgun combo alone. And then maybe he'll get the three waveform. Uh, charges and then he can shotgun people, wait for him in, and then wait for him back out if he needs that extra little burst of damage to kill. I'm not certain if he had it before that fight, but he had a level 15 talent with plus 300 health, so it gave him a little bit more. And he'll have the four stuff done soon, so that's the item of choice he's gone for. He's a great conductor. Oh boy. Scythe and Bloodthorn fully completed now for Kingwood. Well, too bad he doesn't have the refresher shard anymore. <laughs> Double Scythe is nice. Uh, he actually burned it on the retreat. Like he burned it ready to uh, to re-engage. So potentially they could have held it a little bit longer. But it looks like King was just going to make a, a push through top lane. Yeah, they still have a little bit of time left on the Aegis. So they should use it. They have to fight into the Ravage this time though. So this is, this is their downside. Nice Tinker Ward up on the hill. 
watching the tree movement of Penguin at least. But there's your jump forward. Aloha and Dance with the Bell Strikes. A lot of, a lot of damage and the Blood Bowl there for the Rabbit. Space will be created when the Templar Assassin gets blocked out. Remember, she has the Aegis the Immortal and the Guardian Angel. There was no follow-up damage. Another crush on the outside of the base. They're looking for their pick-off over on the Rubik. The attack won't be enough. Again, the Ghost Hunter mid point on the attack. Meant that he could dodge it out, but here comes the Templar Assassin once more. They keep him slowed up. The Cold Embrace is over on Karkos. That initiation from the Mirana all ends up in North God. will have to buy back to defend the base. As they keep the tracks up on King with no Tide Ravage, but also no GA. That was a nice try to kill the Morphling with a surprise Hex. However, TA did not have the PKB in her inventory. She... I, that's a pretty tough call whether you, or not you want to keep your treads over your BKB, mm -hmm. but she didn't have the BKB, so she blinked in and then she got immediately disarmed uh, or lifted, I'm not sure. She got disabled as soon as she was trying to burst the silence hexed Morphling. That would have been a clutch if they could kill uh, Aloha there. He only had, you know, 1500 HP at the point. Coming in once again, there's your initiation onto the Morphling. Wait for we'll let him break free. The Aghanim Scepter has arrived now for the Omni Knight, but his ulti is still on cooldown for another 86 seconds. No I don't actually know if I like this, uh, like the Scepter pick. I, I like the Aeon Disc pickup more than the Scepter. <laughs> what world are you living in, Ben? It's because if you're sitting in the back, you don't need Aeon Disc. And if you're in the front, you don't need Scepter. So it's kind of a weird it's a contradiction. It, uh, it, it jump is. in once again. They really want to bring down that ball fling arrow flight ball. Trick wave will soak it up. The curse is keeping the back line in play. So Marana again having no real influence. The team three town will be brought down. Exotic Tia protected by that Lotus Orb. Just sits on the front line. Burns his BKB as well. They should at least maybe wait for the, the BKB. GA or BKB. I mean, GA BKB is one minute until you got both. Yeah, I just might as well at this point, right? I mean, I guess you. Yeah, Aegis is down. Just wait for BKB Aegis. Their T fours are in shambles too. There is one T four left, and that thing is almost <laughs> dead. So well, there's been so much time trying to defend the top lane. You can't really bring anybody off the lane for Vega. Nope. You need more four staffs too on Vega's side. They have to get. A, they 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 actually have zero four staffs. Oh no no, no Tidehunter has one. Okay. So, Tidehunter is the only one that can force staff the Morphling out, who's actually kind of in danger of dying. I love, I love the way that Morphling buys his, his Scardi. He flies it to the Dire Secret Shop to purchase from there because he doesn't believe it's safe to send anything north. Pretty reasonable when they're pushing top lane. Yep. But that curry managed to thread between two of the Kingwood heroes. Yep. By flying a direct path. <laughs> Oof. I would like to see a Nullifier come out so that the Morphling can't do anything. Morph, uh, Bloodthorn plus Nullifier, pretty good combo, although I do think they are slot challenged now. Templar is six slotted. Razor is going Here for AC as last. Jumping forward, initiation onto the Morphling. Arapon is forward, Nietzsche's BKB will soak it, and the Rabbit, very ineffective. Both the BKBs were already up. Morphling dropping so quickly, the wave for He'll get out to safety, but the chain crushes. Continue to come in, so the Rubik will fall. The Eye of the Storm does the work, and they're going to reposition themselves with that curse down. The Morphling, oh, has he got enough to survive the arrow? And stuff will know the Cold of Race is giving enough life back up to the slot of the God once again. Feels like he's absolutely a non-factor in this game, and rightly so. GG. Exotic Deer has a triple kill and finally puts game one down. Very shoved into the back. Amazing control by King when they just completely locked down that Morphling. In between all the stuns, the silence, and then after the BKBs wore off, they hexed them, and then they went to curse them until their next round was up. That was crazy from King Win. You know, the one small lapse in uh, one of their fights where they kind of just lost four hero, four track kills. Mm -hmm. um, the Winter Wyvern, you know, he, he had good intentions. He meant well. He did. He did. And okay. Vega, Vega actually, I think, played pretty well given the lineup. They actually executed that to 